Um, we're essentially running because we want to continue serving students. We've done it over the last few years. Mm -hmm. And it's something that uh, brings great pleasure in terms of providing that experience that we've had and having other people get involved and engage with their community, their AMS. Um, I think we're all passionate about the AMS in this community, Queens. And we want people to feel comfortable, feel that they can access their student government and take advantage of what it really has to offer. Uh, I want to show that it's possible for others to do the same. Uh, throughout my four years here at Queens, I've noticed that it can be intimidating to engage with your student leaders and uh, I want to see what I can do to change that. Um, we sat around a coffee table and we decided the AMS can improve and our platform is written in terms of room for improvement. Um, I, I want to show that it's possible for someone to do their homework and uh, meet with as many people as they can and if they can, they can raise their hand and, you know, and they won't be told to put their hand down. I think first and foremost is because we have a passion for the mandate of the society. Um, we believe that the AMS is an integral part of the student experience. Um, it has something for everyone. Um, with that said, it's not the be-all and end-all of the Queen's experience. We understand that there are some students that may not get involved, but the AMS should do everything it can to, to present the resources and opportunities to students. Um, because extracurricular opportunities at Queen's University are just as important as the academic side, um, and we believe students should have as accessible access to that as possible. I guess one of my main motivators is seeing the work that Ashley's done this year in terms of opening up the transparency of the, the financial side of the society in terms of uh, breaking down budget lines and uh, having presentations at AMS Assembly regarding commissioner budgets. I think I want to take that one step further and that's what really excites me personally is having that transparency so students know where their money is going to uh, and what kind of projects and activities their student dollars are funding. Yeah, for me I thought, you know, being a first year, um, getting involved would be kind of interesting. It's not something that happens very often and I also I have uh, goals in my life to get into academia and possibly a teaching position so that's why I went for the university affairs position to kind of get you know ties with the faculty learn what it's all about and the you know the other side of things. Um, I was I worked at Common Ground for the past three years here and I was the head manager last year and I kind of had one of my best experiences at this university in that time um, and was able to manage 125 staff and, and five assistant managers as well, which is kind of, I, I know I keep saying this over and over again in debates, but it's the thing that I, I really did learn the most from an, a, in any experience at this university, um, even above my classes, I'd say. Uh, so I think I really gained my passion for the society through that experience um, and really can see what good it can do for the student body as well and what resources are available. And I just wanted to be able to, to continue that and, and to continue to provide that um, to other students as well. I think for me, um, I'm currently the Social Issues Commissioner for the AMS, so I sit on council and I work directly beneath Kieran Slobodin, who's the current Vice President of University Affairs. And in my position now and getting to know his position, I love everything about it. I love my job now and I love um, the continuation into his position. I really enjoy facilitating opportunities for my peers and trying to provide the best possible student experience. I think I share a lot of the same reasons as Tristan. I am um, the Academic Affairs Commissioner this year for the AMS and I've had such an amazing experience. Um, and I do think that in that capacity, sort of gaining a perspective on how the university works and how what it actually means to advocate on behalf of students. Um, I do a lot of work with the administration, consulting with students, what are your academic concerns, things like the GPA system, so solace, um, senate issues, and then taking that to the administration and saying these are students' concerns and this is how you can address them. I think the largest misconception about our team uh, is that we don't know enough, that we're not experienced enough. Uh, we have done a lot of work to learn as much as we can about the AMS and we're going to continue doing that if elected. Um, we're going to enter a mentorship role with the current exec and meet with all the, uh, all the other people in these offices that we didn't get a chance to meet with. Uh, I think the, lear the learning curve is steep, but that doesn't mean that we're not ready to climb it. We want to. We haven't been seen necessarily as a, like as a team of experience necessarily, but I think we do have quite a bit of experience and the experience that we bring to the table. Um, I think we have just as much experience as any of the other teams running. And we have like a commissioner right now, mm -hmm. we have a faculty society president, we have a vice president who also dealt with a, a budget close to a million dollars as well. And so I think we have uh, the experience that it takes and we haven't really been marketing ourselves that way. Mm -hmm. And we want to, and one of the reasons is because we want to make sure that people feel like they can approach us, right? And so we're not an external team, we're not necessarily an internal team, I think we're a happy medium. And that's something we're trying to get across. People can approach us. We are capable and qualified to do this job, and we want to do it in a, in a positive way. We want to do it in a way that students can get engaged and they just don't feel intimidated by approaching us. 
I thought it was really interesting uh, when we were criticized for being too professional and that that would somehow impede us from engaging with students because we've been engaging with students in our current in our current and past involvement, involvements with the AMS and throughout this campaign. And I think that the best part, um, a really strong quality that we do bring is that we are very professional, which I think is a strength because um, it really enables us and has enabled us in our past positions and our current positions to really do effective advocacy and, and work on behalf of students. But we're also just a bunch of goofballs sometimes, and we really know we have we really enjoy speaking with students. So yeah. um, I was really surprised by that criticism. The most misunderstood aspect of our platform, uh, I'd have to say, is probably our. our our last platform point, which is renaming Alfie's. Uh, it's mostly a rebranding effort. Uh, we want to make it the special, pl the place to go for special events on campus. Uh, and the renaming, uh, first of all, if we did, if we did in fact change the name, we would give a more appropriate honor to Alfred Pierce uh, through naming a larger, more appropriate space after him. Um, and also, the other thing is we're not set in stone about changing it. Uh, it would be a contest or a poll uh, to see what people wanted, and one of the options would be Alfie's, and if people wanted that and they clicked on it, then by all means it would stay the same. I think one thing I wanted to touch on um, is something that's had a lot of discussion recently is the Physical Education Center and reopening mm -hmm. that building. Um, this is something that's a, a, a big part of our platform for sure, and one thing that we really wanted to make clear is that this is a long-term goal. Um, this is something that we we see as a solution um, to not creating phases two and three of the Queen Center. We've spoken with um, Ann Brown, um, who is the Vice Principal of Facilities, as well as Ivan McKean, who is the Business Manager of Physical Plant Services, and they've both said that there's no reason why this isn't possible. I think the reason for why our platform stands out um, is because it's something that's very realistic. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it can be done within a year. We did our research well. We haven't had the need to um, like provide any further information. We publish our platform and that's the way it's remained uh, since day one and it's something because we've been working on it for many many weeks we have 15 points there I think we address every issue that this university is facing we address um, issues of the VP Ops side the VP UA side the commissions and uh, some uh, changes that are happening within the AMS but we're also addressing issues at large we mentioned keeping academic quality and um, we mentioned how uh, we don't want the university's financial situation to jeopardize academics here at Queens. As Mira said, the highlight has been on the very first platform point, which is a long-term goal, but even some of the aspects of that, such as space for HCDS, is also recognized in our short-term goals. Um, there are things we can complete within one year. There are some things we can complete within the first month. With that said, we understand that in any other $16 million corporation or corporation of this side, the yearly turnover is never one year. Um, the, the executives of these other corporations make five-year plans, make ten-year plans, and are usually there for a long time to see these goals through. Um, with that said, we recognize we, if, we do, if we are successful, we would only be here for one year, but that doesn't mean we want to start and end at that one year. Mm -hmm. We want to set this up for future years. We want to set this up for the students that aren't going to be at Queen's, maybe even four or five years down the road. Um, what we can do now to set that up for the future is going to have a very heavy influence on the undergraduate experience at that time. And it doesn't matter to us that we won't be here. It doesn't matter to us that maybe even, you know, first years right now won't be here when this completed, as long as this gets realized eventually, because it would change the undergraduate experience. It would be very beneficial to students. Uh, we've, we've had a lot of compliments, actually, on our platform. I would say in terms of how it's written and how it's structured. Uh, we, we, when we were writing our platform, we asked three basic questions. How can we increase sense of citizenship in the AMS? How can we better serve students day to day on the society side? And how can we reflect the by students, for students philosophy on the corporate side? And then all of our platform points arise as answers to those questions. And within each platform point, we would break it down into uh, why does it matter? So why are we talking about it? Uh, how is it currently handled, just for information? Merits of the current AMS team, because we don't want to say we want to wildly change everything. There's a lot of things that are great that are going on right now. And room for improvement is uh, talking points for how we think we can make it better. I think that we are really looking at this from two perspectives. Um, addressing mental health. So the first is looking at the peer support center. That's a service offered by the AMS and it's a service I would argue the AMS can do that the university can't in that it's a peer counseling service. And what we've heard from students as we've been consulting with students is that there's many reasons that a student would feel more comfortable going to a peer support center rather than a professional counselor. Um, there's also, you know, it's, it's open later so students might have access to a peer support center before being able to get an appointment with appointment with HCDS and so we really value at the Peer Support Center and all that it offers to the student body. It's also expanded tremendously in the last year or so and so 
to help the PSC, as it's called, um, expand further, we would really want to look at the resources that are allocated to it, including uh, the time of the director, possibly increasing that to a full-time position, and also looking at the space and financial resources needed to run the center effectively to, to serve the increased, um, increased number of students that are using the center. However, we do think it's really important to recognize that there, there are many reasons that students may need more than peer counseling. They may need professional counseling. That's something that the university needs to do. And we've been speaking with Health, health Counseling Disability Services. We met with Dr. Mike Condra before the break. We've spoken to him several times after the winter break um, as we've been forming our ideas about how can we, as a student government that has such a powerful voice on campus really help HCDS. The number one um, concern that Dr. Condra has said time and time again is that HCDS needs more space. I think we have quite a few plans for that. Uh, the major one is to bolster the services offered by the Peer Support Centre by getting them a bigger space. We want to make sure the first thing we do if we're elected is to move them into a larger space so that they can have a confidential meeting area as well as a reception area and also install soundproofing so it is the safe confidential space that it should be for students. So in our platform, we talk about prioritizing mental health. Um, in my current role, I oversee the AMS Peer Support Center, as well as the Mental Health Awareness Committee uh, and Heads Up, which is a mental health publication, and I chair the Mental Health Advisory Group. Um, and I also sit in the Mental Health Working Group of Student Affairs. So I've had a lot of experience in mental health um, initiatives on campus and seeing how they work together and that kind of stuff. Um, in our platform, we speak to extending the hours of the AMS Peer Support Center. They're currently 3 p.m. until 1 a.m., seven days a week. We would like to see that 2 p.m. till 2 a.m., seven days a week, so it is open 12 hours a day. Further, we want to support the Mental Health Caucus. Um, it's an initiative that came out of the Mental Health Advisory Group and a uh, student at large who attended the Jack Project Conference. And this is a, a group where uh, various student leaders who um, are heading up clubs or committees, different initiatives dealing with mental health can come together talk about what they're doing, work to cross-promote, work on events together, and also, should anything happen on campus, work to create a campus-wide strategy for response, um, and also campus-wide proactive uh, strategies as well. We also really feel that, again, this is not a big flashy point. We're talking about reinforcing and enhancing things that are already in place, but I really feel that that's a responsible way to do this, um, because those are things that are working that we need to improve, but they are in place. We will work to uh, infuse mental health considerations into every decision and every initiative that we take on. And I think that that's really the key point. Every time we do something, we should be considering how this affects our students' mental health and how we could be doing it better so that we're better supporting them. It's extremely important to the team. And we do have personal experience with various mental health issues. Um, and, and I have professional experience working with them as well. Uh, so really ensuring that we're thinking about it in everything that we do is so important to our team. Uh, I'd say the one the one service that, that we have been looking at is, is Alfie's because it does post uh, significant losses uh, year to year. Uh, in terms of our plans with it, we want to make it the spe place for special events on campus so that we can, you know, like what they've been moving towards recently is the classic rock nights, the, the lounge nights, um, I think there's a hip, not, hip hop night, and those are all much better attended than when it's a top 40 club, I think. So I think we're, just, we're taking that aspect where they have found success and we'd like to expand on that. Yeah, we really want to build on that by doing more events like possibly a Battle of the Bands, getting like slam poetry in there, just kind of bro uh, broadening the, uh, the scope of what Alfie's can do. Yeah, I remember talking with one of the people that runs the Kingston Slam Poetry and when I mentioned the Alfie's of space, he was like, I never thought of Alfie's that way. Mm -hmm. But that would be a really cool place to have it. So, and I think uh, maybe we get a similar response from a lot of different people. I think we should be looking at the AMS corporate side as one business, and then each of the services as different departments within that business as well. So what we're looking for is a bottom line of zero um, for the entire corporate side of the AMS. Uh, having worked in a service that had a massive deficit um, and seeing that repaired, um, seeing that service is going to have a surplus this year, um, I can very well see that many problems are correctable um, within a short period of time as well. I, to be honest, I didn't expect that Common Ground would be making money within two years. I thought it would be more like five years. Um, but seeing the potential of a service to do that, and this is a very different environment than any other corporate world. Um, what's very unique about our AMS services is that uh, there's a one-year turnaround in all of our staff employees, obviously. But also this university has turnaround of students every year. You get different customers every single year. Um, and one thing that I noticed is that changes you make to a service uh, 
won't be um, remembered after a certain amount of time because you have the flow of students in and out of Queens all the time. To speak on deficits that have lasted for a while, it's something that we definitely need to address. I think that every year executives always say that they're going to address um, the deficit of a service that's had one for five years. Uh, and I don't know, I mean like, you actually have to do something about it. I don't, we can't have a service running a $30,000 deficit seven years in a row. And that's just not responsible to the student body and obviously not sustainable. I'm not saying that you need to cut out that service at all. And I don't think that really should be ever the right approach to one. I think we've seen a general um, kind of trend so far over the past couple of years of, of increasing or decreasing the, the deficits that we've been seeing in some of our services. Uh, from my understanding, that, that curve is going to continue um, in the future years, and hopefully we can see profits in, in almost all of our services. Um, some of our safety services, specifically student constables, are, are posting uh, more than $20,000 deficit, and obviously that's, that's a real problem. But steps are being taken this year by the current management team, uh, Gracie Golden and, and Will, to, to deal with that issue. Um, so with those initiatives that they're gonna be putting in place this year, we're gonna continue those and make sure they come into full effect. Um, with those, um, we should be seeing um, almost a reduction, a complete reduction in deficit, hopefully in that service. Um, again, uh, for example, some of our other media services, such as CFRC, uh, again, we're, we're planning for um, a reduction in deficit as well. Um, this year's um, deficit is almost half of what last year or the year before, should I say, is uh, deficit was. So again, we're seeing a, a general trend to either zero, for budgeting for zero, or, or in terms of some of our retail services, such as TAPS or Trek or outlet, we can, we're, we're anticipating profits in the near future. Um, so as long as we keep planning and um, planning uh, in, in the long term for where we want our services to be, I think we're in a very good place to, to see deficits reduce and profits to increase for our services. Out of this team, I actually have never worked full-time for the AMS mm -hmm. before. Um, the position I have now is not even in AMS policy. The Student Senate Caucus Chair is the one that I hold that has any affiliation with the AMS. Um, so that's me personally. Um, however, we are quoted in the journal as saying that. And I think it's really important. An insider perspective is really important and can be beneficial, but so can an outsider perspective. Mm -hmm. and, and we really stress our experience and passion throughout this election. Um, however, throughout this campaign, we've also started stepping outside of our comfort zones, out of the AMS offices or out of Walk Home or Common Ground. And, and we really try to touch base with students that aren't necessarily part of the AMS or may not even know what the AMS does. Um, a lot of students, they can work here, they can work full time here, or maybe they just sign up for the health and dental plan. But the AMS has a heavy influence in all aspects of the Queen's community. And, and once students start to realize that, then they start telling us their opinions, they start criticizing, they start giving us their input. Um, but it's really important for us to step out of these offices, to step out of the JDUC and go to every corner of campus, every age of student and every faculty society or every faculty, sorry, um, and, and engage them. Um, because often students don't come to the JDUC. The students, there are a certain number of students that don't believe that the AMS is the center of the Queen's campus, which is fair, and we totally understand that. With that said, we would make an effort to engage them, and, and if they don't want to be part of the AMS, that's fine. But there is something here for everybody. Um, but, but in terms of an insider experience, we, we do have a lot of experience working for the AMS, but we recognize that, and we recognize the importance of stepping out of these office, offices and going to every corner of the campus and engaging every different type of student. I know that uh, for the past three months I've, I've read over um, the Constitution, all the policy mails and everything, and I've also met with anyone, all of us have met with anyone who's willing to meet with us, um, and in terms of ensuring that I bring uh, my, my skill set as well suited, uh, we're going to enter a mentorship role uh, to learn the facts, but we can learn that, I know we can. Mm -hmm. um, relevant experience, um, I have experience working with the administration. And when I walk into the Student Affairs office, they always love to see me. So I, I don't think that that would change if I take office. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really think working with the administration is something I can bring to the table. Yeah, as for relevant experience, like, like I've said before, I haven't been at Queen's very long, but I have had lots of experience outside of academia. I've, uh, I've been the head of sales in a software company. I've uh, opened and run a pawn shop here in Kingston. And I've worked lots of jobs in customer service and finance, so I think those have really built my teamwork skills and my interpersonal skills, which is going to be really important for the role of VP UA, uh, especially when working with the administration. Yeah, I think in terms of preparing for the campaign and how we have thus far reached out, I think we've tried to contact pretty much 
we've we have contacted every single faculty head, and we have contacted the administration as well, some of the so the faculty members and the deans of the different faculties, and then the faculty society presidents as well. So we met with Kelsey Patterson, Derek Dodgson, and Living Computing, Rob Saldine, and like um, every single person we've contacted, Escalating Society, uh, BMA. Uh, Sorry, yeah, an MBA program, not BMA, <laughs> <laughs> with David Gerard. And so I think that's the, one of the steps that we took initially, which we're trying to outreach to as many students as possible. And we've been, when we've been doing our class talks this week and engaging with students that way, we've really targeted a lot of um, classes that are commerce students, engineering. And we were actually discussing about this morning. It's like uh, we're, we had the option between two classes for one specific time. And we said, you know what, we haven't really done that many arts and science classes, so I think we've even focused a little bit too much in, in outreaching that we've sort of forgotten a bit about our own students, but that's not necessarily the case. And so I think we've taken those measures and it's something we want to continue doing moving forward if we do take office. Even on, our, yeah, even on our campaign team and our volunteers, we worked hard to ensure that we did have volunteers mm -hmm not just from arts and science. So we, we do have several volunteers who are from different faculties as well, um, who've been really good at like helping to give us perspective from what other students would need and stuff. And, there, and we did talk to the leaders, and we also talked to students at large. Um, and the ones that we brought in our team have been incredible with the feedback and really helping us to get a student at large perspective from other faculties as well.